it's a little strange leaving Nice this time because every other time I've left Nice, I've always known, ah, I'll be back in a week or two because it's such a nice place. But this time, I don't know when I'm coming back. Wasted. So as I was approaching this harbour in Monaco, I got a message saying, oh, it's been declined. I'm like, God damn it, what am I gonna do? I got shopping to do. And then I got here and they were like, oh, no, you're good. And it's the next place, the one in Italy that declined it. They're busy, they're just full. So I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. Cause that was a really cheap marina. It's only 15 euros a night. All the others around it are like 45, 46, 47. So I'm probably gonna go down that way, buy more, I just bought diesel here, but I'll buy more diesel, which is a lot cheaper at Imperia on the way. But there's two reasons for coming here. There's a, a darty store which sells the carpet that I want to buy. And there's the best supermarket in the world right there. I mean, seriously, it's just fucking awesome. So I'm gonna go there a couple of times in the next 18 hours and, um, and then leave. Uh, getting electricity here is a little complicated. They gave me um, this adapter, which takes it from 32 three phase to 32 two phase. And then this one, my adapter goes into this and that knocks it down to a 16 amp here. Ta -da! It's weird because I shouldn't be apprehensive at all. I've done this. I've done it. It's, it's not that difficult. All I got to do is go out there and turn left. But I'm going into new territory again. And you never know quite what you're getting into. And even though I feel quite confident doing it all now, I'm still going into a new country with a new language, a new port, new everything. So, hey, <laughs> I do get a little bit, I don't know, not overwhelmed, but something. Ah, who knows? I gotta get fuel as well. Um, I've got about a third of a tank in each of the two tanks, and that's good for probably. I don't know, 200 kilometers, but um, I just feel more comfortable when they're more than half full. But we did get out of the, um, the marina right on time. It gives me I know, I told them I'd be there about three o'clock, so, um, or maybe I told them four, I don't know. But sometime late afternoon, and I got plenty of time to get there. I'm doing about seven or eight knots. I mean, it's funny because you think it's a little bit more scary than being on the canals, but if you take your eye off the road on the canals, you hit something within about 10 or 15 seconds. Here, I could, 
practically take a nap and I would be fine because there ain't no boats around this time of year. It's kind of just me. We are officially in Italy now. So, you know, it's kind of exciting. It's really strange. An hour into the trip and the, the surface of the water has completely changed. Um, back there, there was no swell at all, but there were choppy little waves. Here, there's a, like a one meter swell. You can kind of see it there, um, but no waves. I mean, it's a little bit cold, but not horribly. I mean, I've just got a thin jacket on and the sun's out. Um, waves are great. It's really good. Boat is going good. No problem, so they can do this all the way to Malta. I've slowed down because um, it saves fuel and uh, it makes the ride a little bit more like rolly because when you go a bit faster, you just kind of, I don't know, it's a bit easier, but I'm saving, I'm probably using about half as much fuel and I'm doing about six knots instead of nine. Well, that did not suck at all. Uh, it was a good 60 kilometer there, 60 kilometer trip, and um, boat went great. Um, got here, which is beautiful, and here I can get some fuel and then push on tomorrow. That's Christina. She said Italy is a really good place. Oh, and to stay here? 30 euros a night. Not bad. It's not quite as peaceful here as you'd expect. The, um, <laughs> the local police seem to like driving around with their, with their sirens on. Maybe there's a lot of criminals here. Um, all the marinas in Italy are a little more expensive than the ones in um, France um, but not much but you just have to be careful you don't have to uh, end up spending too much money because you want somewhere to stay see sirens everywhere um, but I found uh, a place that's just up the road and it has fuel for uh, two euros a liter so it's not perfect but it's not horrible because some of them are 220 222 a liter which is actually quite a lot if you have to buy 700 liters i'm going to cast off and we'll be on our way Hitchhiker's guy on the speaker, boat on the water, me in command. This information contained in the book. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I gave up waiting, so I'm just going to go to the next place, which is not far at all. It's only about 15 kilometers that away. Simply steel dome, dark From within, to something more modest. I mean, everyone should have one of these. It's a boat washer. Water, diesel.
lot of big boats here. I mean, you can't see them, they're too far away, but there's some very big container ships and tankers and things. So you've got to make sure you keep an eye out for them. You don't want to get in their way. That would be impolite. And the forecast for tonight is very calm. I mean, it won't be as calm as a marina, but so it should be very, very calm. They do like their apartment buildings. You can't really see them, they're too far away, but there's like a string of apartment buildings right along looking at the ocean, um, which you don't get in France. They've got different people in charge with different priorities, but uh, yeah, nice. Uh, right now we're about 1K offshore. I've got 32 meters under the keel and I'm going to be pulling around behind the harbor. Um, there's a couple of like piers that go out that will give me really good shelter and I want to find somewhere about six, seven, eight meters deep uh, to drop the anchor and then I'm good for the day. I mean the sun's going to be going down in uh, like an hour or two and I don't know, I had just a very productive day, so that makes me feel very good. I really like these days when it's calm, because if it's calm, you can go slower. If the, if the sea's a little choppy, you tend to use more throttle, because you can then like skim over the waves a bit, so the boat, boat isn't lurching around. If, if I'm doing 12 knots and the water is choppy, the boat is pretty much just cruising. But if I pull it down to seven knots, every wave, every bit of swell that comes past, the boat is lurching one side and lurching the other. and It just gets to be boring. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh God. But when it's calm, I can slow. I mean, I'm doing about mm, six knots now, which makes it more economical. It takes longer to get there. But it's a very stable ride because there's just, yeah, as you can see, there's just no big swell or waves. Yes, confirmed Marvin. Ah, ignore him, said Zayf. What is only making it up? Making it up, said Marvin, swiveling his head in a parody of astonishment. Not sure where, I don't know the name of it, but um, it's a really like sheltered little area that I decided to to drop my anchor for the night and uh, I don't know, just watch a movie, wake up early in the morning and push on. Okay, we are about 130 kilometers into Italy from the French border. Everything's going well, two good days and I've stopped up on fuel, I've got a full pantry and um, I'm gonna, gonna try and move around to Rome. Like, not actually Rome, it's about 30 kilometers towards the coast from Rome. But there's a nice chap in a marina there called Blue Dolphin, and uh, they've invited me to come and stay. Lots of police sirens here in, in Italy. Not too fond of that, but. <laughs> Trigger, right? 